Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Addiction Master on most social media. Today, I'm going to be talking about Queen of Hearts, a Twin Peaks fan film. So this might be a first, or maybe a rare occasion. Not sure if it'll happen again. I am talking about a fan film, which is an oddity itself. But this is how much I enjoyed it. Um, I think I might separate this a little bit between the content itself and how it pertains to Twin Peaks. With first saying, in a lot of my podcasts, I talk about that I'm fascinated that movies get done at all. This takes so much work to put in to get a movie made. I don't believe people go out to make bad movies in general. Which is why I'll say I love, you know, Green Lantern. I love watching it. I've watched like so many times already. But I'm not going to debate if it's a good movie or not. But I just want to give credit to the people out there who do this for a living or who try to do it as projects and labors of love. I have a friend who's a short filmmaker, would love to, you know, uh, have a career in this business, but he has a family and work, as I'm sure this director does which I'll get into in a bit, because I want to give credit to everybody. And I just want to say, in general, you have a fan film, A Labor of Love, about four hours running time. And I recommend it as a general thing to watch. To watch uh, a talented person who's really into the content and the mythos of the show, Twin Peaks, tell a story about a, uh, a powerful woman who comes into her own and how it ties into the FBI who dragged her into it in a way. It's a prequel sequel and I totally recommend people watch Queen of Hearts, a Twin Peaks fan film. So it's written and directed by Cameron Cloutier. I hope I'm saying the names right, please. I'm a, just a wise ass from Brooklyn, New York. Produced by Madison Bates. Photographed and edited by Cameron Cloutier. Visual Effects by Benjamin Oliver, starring Madison Bates as Annie Blackburn, Nico Abera as Dale Cooper, Charlotte Roy as Caroline Earl, Paul Griffiths Springer as Wyndham Earl, Sarah Andrews as Norma Jennings, Larry Oblander, Oblander II as Major Briggs, Scott Johnson as Dean, Mindy Win uh, Whitfield as Diane. A round of applause for this cast, for the director, uh, editor, photographer, visual effects. Got to give props um, to this type of labor of love. Now, it's a fan film. I had done, the only thing that I've ever done like this on my channel is... I did a podcast in my movies playlist called Cosmos. And it was done by an independent company, like two brothers, I think. And it's an amazing film, a must-see in my opinion. Small budget, small cast, small limited locations. It took like six years to make on some new cameras and stuff. Check that podcast out. And they're the only legitimate writers or directors or company that actually responded and left a comment on my YouTube page. <laughs> I don't get no comments on my YouTube page, you know, for the most part. And anyway, what I'm trying to say is, there are these moments. Now, I am born in 1971. I'm a nerd, D&D, &D, Dungeon Master, Game Master. I have watched so many fan films, it's not funny. Um, Star Wars, D Twin Peaks itself, uh, so many fan stuff that it's just something you you you, you take in and they kind of blend together and become just um you know things that you might enjoy from time to time so getting more honed in onto what this podcast is actually about because it's not going to be a critique in a sense yeah i have two couple of nitpicks about the movie maybe a decision i would have made differently but that, i don't that's not what this podcast is going to be about it's about finding a, a, a YouTube talent who has a labor of love and 
He gets it done by a independent, you know, one of those Indiegogo type things, raises the money, about $25,000, I think, in total, and gets the job done. No matter how long it took, pandemic, uh, people leaving, it's just an amazing feat. Real quick, I'll go over how I got into this in a sense. Um, in 2009, uh, around 2009, 2010, I knew I was going to write my book and I was going to start a YouTube channel. And at the time, it was going to be mostly mental health meditation stuff. I don't think I had the vision because I was with my fiance at the time. I think we were going to do that type of stuff. My book was published in 2012 and I did Comic Con events and things like that. And my life took a tumble. You can go and look at my podcast and playlist and stuff, but um, in the, the interim, throughout my life, I get this, what I call the fever. So if I get the fever for sci-fi, I might watch all the Predator movies. And being born in 1971, I think me and this director could be about the same age. He might be younger than me a little bit. But if I'm 18, 19-ish, Twin Peaks comes out, I'm fascinated by it, it's got my imagination going. And I, I did a podcast on Twin Peaks, maybe as a whole, but I think I might have talked about it as it was something that I was so aware that my aunts loved and my uh, friends' older sisters loved. And it was something I look back on as like one of those things women really respected or liked. And getting to my point, I do deep dives and I'll just dive in just every now and then. And I caught this uh, gentleman in his podcast i think it's obnoxious and anonymous you can check it out i'll put links maybe you know in the description and stuff but um and i just love listening to podcasts and despite the fact that i do mostly 30 minute uh you know 20 to 30, 40 minute like podcasts i enjoy longer ones just leave them on and listen to so i've listened to maybe hundreds of his videos over the years maybe all of them up to a certain point at one time just leaving it on and getting in and hearing people talk about a show that I love. And it was around the time, what do we call it, season three now? Twin Peaks, The Return. It caught a buzz and I went back into it and started watching his stuff. And at the time, maybe three others that might have been connected to Obnoxious and Anonymous and Cameron Cloutier and it's in a way. And... I used them as a, you know, a build up to the show. In, in a sense, I was captivated by the, uh, you know, the content already. And he had mentioned that he was going to do a fan film and he always had this idea. It goes back to like 1993. And, you know, I remember me and my friends with the first camcorders back in the day and making films. And like I said, I have a friend who's done it and I've done some voice work and got some credit on helping him do some shots maybe and stuff. And so I'm not in it in that sense, you know, maybe I fancy myself a writer because I wrote a novel and write screenplays and ONCs and stuff like that. Anyway, so uh, now I don't know, what, when did The Return come out? 2017-ish. Um, every once in a while when I had a fever for Twin Peaks, I would dive back in and always cycle around his content. And <clears throat> making a long story short, I recently saw he started putting out the parts of his movie. Uh, four parts. And I think I came in around the third part. And then eventually he put all five parts out and then put out the full version, which I'll probably link, link to. But I was captivated. I, was, I just had the fever. So maybe there's a bias there. But like I said, I'm not saying this is judging this as a blockbuster movie that is going to make $100 million in the box office. It might have that feeling that, you know, you want, you're going to assume it's independent or... But I think it transcends that. And, and I don't know if it's just um, timing. Um, look, people are just maybe super talented at what they do. Do you get the right people? And, he, you know, I listen to so many of his podcasts. There are some amazing stories behind this, too. I recommend listening to his stuff. Um, he has... Tons of playlists, by the way. Um, Obnoxious and Anonymous, by the way. Queen of Hearts is uh, Annie Blackburn is another thing. I'm not that good at this stuff. But 
there's just this air of uh, mystery to it that connects with the show from the 90s or the, what was it yeah i think 90s and fire walk with me which i love i'm not even sure if i can keep be considered a david lynch fan uh well all right i like elephant man dune fire walk with me what's the one with nicholas cage wild at heart all the twin peak stuff maybe i'm missing something in there um but i can't look back and be honest and say i'm the biggest fan of like blue velvet or mulholland drive you know i could i, could, I don't look back and think i don't like them but like I, i've seen some of these podcasts these people are fucking passionate and like anything you get these um split divisions and stuff so i he's gone through that on his channel he's been targeted and whatever i don't give a fuck about that nonsense in in a way but you know you're trying to make a channel um you know your friend convinces you to do it talk about twin peaks no one was fucking talking about it really remember if this is 2012 to 2013 i don't think it was even announced that twin peaks the return was coming out i think it actually broke news while he was just doing his shit and then when the twin peaks return came on it was like fucking five days a week and I, I just ate as much content as i could and when i saw the four parts come out i started watching i got like through the first three and i found myself already envisioning how i'm gonna connect it with my role playing so oh well besides i've talked about this also besides role playing in my house with my friends dungeons and dragons i call it just superhero stuff because it's an amalgamation of everything and we've included x-files twin peaks fringe it, but never really focused on it. It was just like fun stuff to do on the side when we play the Marvel. Um, I use the Marvel Saga system. It's a deck of cards because it's easy to play, easy to get into fast. And when the pandemic happened, I started using a site called Roll20. Anyway, I'm, I'm up to part three and I'm stopping and thinking about the stuff and thinking about how it would fit in and how I'm going to use it in a way. And I waited for the fourth and then i didn't watch it and then like the fifth one came out and i actually held out well you know i'm going through a lot of shit going on right you know and these things are hard to um you know there's so much stuff out there especially what i do with podcasts and you know, i do a movie something that i've watched recently an oldie but goodie and i'll do a current thing in any case this is a um uh, a time where it just it just captivated me and connecting it to the franchise now, I might get a little more in, but I'm not going to give spoilers or major plot reveals because that's not really what I do unless I'm like engaged maybe in is a deeper conversation. So if you're a fan of Twin Peaks, see, my issue with the return is the, the well, season three is it's more like, I don't think it could be argued David Lynch got to do what he wanted to do. And he made season three. But I found myself disappointed in parts of it. I could never sell it to my friends who didn't know anything about Twin Peaks. And it's just, um, it's just, it just doesn't sit well with me as a whole at the end. But I still think it's a beautiful disaster. Uh, uh, something that should have been made, should be watched. Totally recommend it. But it, it you know... And I'm not saying this movie's better. I mean, it's four hours compared to the return, 18 hours. But how it fits in, for me, feels like I, got, I caught a two-night event on, you know, so, uh, whatever you call it, Showtime, HBO. And like I said, I'm, we're talking fan film. And I'm not trying to give, like, you know, it's going to look like, um, you know, a, a current blockbuster or even mystery thriller it's got a style and flavor that i found refreshing in the sense that it didn't feel like he was mimicking david lynch you know like his work although you you're still there because it's twin peaks and you use the right music cues and things like that it invokes evokes it but at no time did i feel um you know overwhelmed by that concept of 
um, you know, trying to do exactly what he did or just paying homage to it. And it's a balance, I guess, with directors. Look, I've never directed anything, but, uh, you know, you're doing a fan film, so you've got already other people's content, but you love it so much. You, you know, your, your mind went in directions, like you're planning your thing, and then the return comes out. You see what they do, and like me, I, I was like, what the fuck happened to Annie? So, getting to the heart of the show, Queen of Hearts, it's really a journey of Annie Blackburn, and uh, a sequel to what happened from Fire Walk With Me, and the return, in a sense, because it does, I don't want to give too much away, this is a fucking amazing moment. That gave me chills at the end. And your it's book it's well not a book and it's it's in tandem with a story about uh Dale Cooper, the FBI agent, um and his first real maybe challenge, which was not only one of an occupational one of the FBI, but of uh love. That might have been not a smart move. Like I said, I'm not giving too much away. And so you're watching the thing you heard about through the show. Like when, when Cooper, Dale Cooper, a special agent, comes to Twin Peaks and he's investigating uh, Polanski and Laura Palmer, there's, um, you know, there's this um, thing you go through with him that reveal certain things about him that talk about well i think it has to do with more like something would happen on this show and then little bits and pieces they'd reveal oh something happened in the past and he had a love that taught him a lesson type thing and you know you, you don't get the full story until more is revealed when uh window merle in the second season is um well i'm not giving spoilers away about season two but you know Twin Peaks fans are going to know right away, but, you know, I don't know if I hit any audiences like that, because, you know, don't, it's a fucking shitty small channel. In any case, most of these things are my, just my thoughts, and leaving um, something behind, in a sense, and giving, paying homage, and giving respect to people who do these type things. So, you've got Annie Blackburn, and her journey in this is great. Uh, kudos to the actress, and obviously the um, uh, producer, too, right? The, the, yeah, produced. And like I said, the, when you take the journey through his podcast and stuff, and I'm not really one of the dedicated, like I can't, these people are, um, you know, hungry for his content and stuff. And I was just using it as a means to get my life back in order because, you know, things were going on and I would do deep dives. And like I said, uh, all around great cast, and the prequel sequel thing works great for me. My brain was going in directions already for my role playing because I this was really something I was also doing in my own head, piecing it together, and you know trying to fit in where I can continue the story. I do it with everything, you know. How am I going to fix the new Star Wars movies? Why well, fucking fix that on my own in my role playing world and things like that? I have a Witcher campaign, and I'm separating it from the show, things like that. But again. Queen of Hearts, a Twin Peaks fan film, just is a labor of love that I think should be watched. Uh, anybody curious about these things, if you have um, an inkling of making movies and stuff, I think it's a good thing to show people. You know, think about um, how many people, you know, I'm sure if in some sense you could describe because uh, I don't know them fucking, you know, Cameron Cloutier. But, you know, he, he's, he's probably a, a husband, a, a loyal friend, dedicated, hard worker, whatever. From the bits I get from the podcast, right? And you're going to make a movie. You plan on doing it for like two and a half hours. It turns out to be a four-hour movie. People leave. Like I said, there are stories, which I love, like, watching or listening to, like, the behind-the-scenes of Jaws and stuff. And I know it's crazy that I'm actually even comparing this stuff to, like, David Lynch and now fucking Jaws, but I know, I don't find fan films that I come across that I'm just so wrapped up in, and maybe that's the beauty of Twin Peaks. Uh, you know, 
not that I'm saying is uh, no shortcomings to everybody's, you know, work in a sense, even some of the greats. And I could see someone, you know, coming in a, a different, co- without knowing the context, not really understanding certain things. But when you're maybe, not to say good, but a decent writer who has an understanding of film and what it's supposed to convey, and, you know, you're, you're good at your craft, um, I think it's a, I don't want to say a miracle, but it's such an achievement to get people and get them to do what you want and they act, get the lighting and so many things go in to this work. I think it should be, you know, held up to, a, you know, for more people to see, to, you know, show that, like, you can do these things. Um, my friend's story that I talk about is, you know, watching the Star Wars makings and stuff. There's uh, times where these movies captivate you, and it surprised me that this kind of did that in a weird way with... The first thing I, th- I thought about was, like, putting it into my world, and also with my friend Steve, talking to Steve, like, we've always had ideas about doing something. He's got the equipment, you know, that type of thing, and just um, good time, great fun... I, I, I don't know if um it's a good thing to say, you know, like a, a critique of, you know, give, I give it four out of five stars. Like, look, it's a, it's a fan film, but can you notice the talent, the, you know, look, uh, this might sound stupid, but I bet if this guy had, um you know, they gave him $10 million. I, I, I I wouldn't bet he couldn't be a um, Robert Rodriguez, right? Or someone who makes like a Desperado or, you know, finds his craft like a John Carpenter who, you know, decided to go his own way and, uh, you know, George Romero and things like that. Like, you know, one turn, different way, an alternate reality. And I could see this guy being successful filmmaker. And in the end, is that what catches me? Is is this super talent out there ready to touch things and make, you know, millions of dollars? Like, I don't know. I think he's a talented podcaster in general. Um, you know, he's got a lot of time to fill. He does it well. If you're talking about obnoxious and anonymous, I don't know much of the other stuff, like some of the guests he's had on. Um, I know there was a weird time where there was this guy... He was funny, but he was insufferable. And he would make Cameron laugh. His whole face would go red. And I'd fucking find myself laughing. But, you know, at some point, you're like, I can't fucking take it no more. Um, the guy <laughs> the guy peeing off camera? Like, it's just, I guess it's the whole journey. And maybe it's like I feel like it's a friend who did it. Like, you know, and, and it, because like I said, I'm not here saying, you know, in, in the second act, um, I noticed uh, a fuck up in the edit or something like nothing, nothing occurred to me like that. Like I can't even find things that stand out like that, except for, like I said, one or two nitpicks. Uh, one time I was a little confused about something and I've, I've watched the fucking thing four times now, um, uh, besides the parts that I get to add the parts to that. And just at night when I do my thing in my brain and I create my construct and I go through all my adventures and the things I'm going to plan, maybe book series and whatever I do. I found myself including this stuff in it. I found myself wanting this Annie in my adventures. Like, I wouldn't even describe her as, um, whatever, what's the actress's name? Holy shit, you know. <laughs> you know I'm a, uh, first off, I'm a pothead, right? Let's, let's get this straight. From Brooklyn, New York, just a loudmouth nut who puts his shit on roof, records it. I don't, you know, sometimes I do a lot of diligent work, but, you know, Heather Graham. I, I, I don't even think of her. I can't even think. I'm thinking of Madison Bays. I'm like, she's like, I already had the adventure planned. I have how, um, you know, my characters in the Marvel Universe, or I call it, see, I don't want to give you the wrong impression, but the characters, the superheroes we play with, because, like, 
when I did the boys adventure, I couldn't include it into my superhero world because the boys has its own concept in itself that doesn't fit in with an amalgamated superhero world. So the adventure was my friend got sent to the, another alternate reality and he lands in the boys and that's an adventure. So for me, it would be a journey to the twin peaks universe and we try to help them course correct. And it, it just, it fit in so well. And another reason why, yes, this isn't a, a, a podcast where I'm fucking shitting on a Justice League, like, because of what a fucking ego fest and some of the shit he does. And granted, like, my fucking best video was me just shitting on Batman, the new Batman. I don't know if that's a fucking popular opinion, but some things just, um, I, I try to admit, you know, they go through my bias. I'm going to love it. So is that part of this? Maybe. Is it um, feeling like at a time in my life where I needed content and I needed to go through stuff, um, his podcast helped me? You know, uh, besides I was doing things like philosophy and critical thinking, um, you know, meditation, breathing techniques. But I needed to escape into worlds. And thankfully, David Lynch, Mark Frost, that whole cast, and Kyle McLaughlin, like, you know, just to do a whole thing, I've done a podcast on that. But this fits in for me. And I'll fucking tell, I'll try to get as many friends as I can to watch it because I started, you know, telling them to watch it as soon as I started seeing it. Most started watching it when the full park came out, you know, and I don't, that's just maybe, like I said, I can't, I tried to get people to watch the fucking return season three. They just kept rolling their fucking eyes at me and staring at me. Like, you're watching the fucking show. There's some, look. Season 3 has some fucking amazing shit. Groundbreaking, never seen before, amazing stuff from a, you know, probably a genius. Like I said, I'm not the biggest David Lynch fan, but I could see the love and respect for his work. Fine, you know. But I'm just gonna, you know, sit here and while the guy is sweeping for five minutes, my friend's just staring at me. He's like, what are you, what are you doing to me? Now, granted, that's someone who just passively knows Twin Peaks. Him being about seven years younger than me, it was still in his zyka, you know, his periphery, you know, it was still something he knew and probably perhaps had watched at times. But it wasn't, you know, it was me like, hey, you know, this is on. And, you know, granted, I'll admit, you know, it was an amazing, what was it, a summer the return came out because I remember his show, his doing his podcast, you know, some great guests he had on. Um, I don't know, fucking. I didn't want to name names because this is not what this is about. But in, in a way, it is because if you're out there, you're working. Like I said, he's a father, a friend, a good worker, hardworking, and you got a passion in life. You get an opportunity. You you have your show. You're doing on podcasts, and you raise the money. I mean. God, how much dedication and just, you know, you got a big fucking heart. You go in and you got it done. And like I said, if you're into this and you know about this and this is something that is in your wheelhouse, you probably know more than I do. Or you're not so high that you're fucking forgetting all the stuff. But um, this guy made a fucking movie. It's four hours. And it's about a content or... I don't know, we call it a franchise, or, you know, whatever. I know there are books, and I've done the books, and man, I love the fucking out, takes the fan edit of Fire Walk with me. This is fitting in. And I've watched some insane Star Wars shit that looks movie, blockbuster movie quality. And granted, eight minutes, you know, seven minutes, and things like that. This is a character study. This guy who plays Windham Merle. What is his fucking name? This guy, um, Larry Oblander, the third. Oh, no, that's Major Briggs. Holy fucking shit. Uh, you know, again, look at me. I'm, I'm doing this fucking podcast about an independent uh, fan film. I, I, I'm a half hour into it and I'm babbling, like, you know, whatever. But just to show you, I've never even talked to this fucking guy, first off. I don't even think I've commented on... I, no, I recently commented um, 
when I watched it like three or four times, I wanted to gather my thoughts in a way. But it's not like um, I'm on his show and things like that. Like, this is uh, just a rare event, I think. It just comes together with my love of the show. Uh, I think what is obviously talented, a labor of love that's, um, you know, just, it, it's beautiful. If you found flaws, I, you know, yeah, he can pull off the sick um, special effects and whatever. But guess what? David Lynch didn't fucking do it either. Watch the fucking return and watch how crazy some of these fucking effects he pulls off because he spent all money on episode eight of the return or season three, whatever the fuck it's called. Right? This fucking guy working his ass off decides to get together. Fucking half the cast quits on him. People have lives. It wasn't like, you know, you're a dick and I don't know. Maybe there is, and I'll get some fucking comments about it, whatever. This is, you know, this is not what this is about. This is, you know, his journey is to me um, shows a lot of courage and dedication. Uh, you know, but maybe he's fucking rich. I don't. Maybe someone land through. You know, would your fundraise? Let's say he scammed her. I don't know. Whatever. This is about the movie he made, a fan film, four hours long. And I, I enjoy it so much. I recommend this to people in general. If you're a, a filmmaker, I'm going to you know, recommend to my friend Steve and anybody else who thinks they're into it. And if you love Twin Peaks, if you're a big fan, this is some good shit. I mean, I look for things to incorporate everywhere into my worlds, and like I said, I, you know, role play, you know, sometimes it was big groups now, you know, things people get, people have lives and families and stuff, it's hard. But like I said, the online, being able to play online was great, and I could do my Marvel cards on there. So, like, that's where I'm going to implement some of this stuff, and it's just fun, it excites me, it gets me going again. And to be honest, for me, this is my revival in it again. Like, this is the Twin Peaks return. It's so crazy. Uh, I'm not into the thing. Like, this is only my deep dive, so I don't know if there is a buzz about everything in general right now. I don't even know, like, what his, uh, David Lynch's, like, projects are in that sense. But I'd like to know what he might do next. If this guy isn't going to do, you know, anything else. Even if it's a, like a, Personal story and stuff, or is a totally original thing. I, I would recommend him to do one of those 10 minute things you send in and you get that fucking development deal, like that type of shit. But this is on a resume now, I'm guessing, right? I dare these people to fucking sit through this for four hours and tell me they don't notice the quality. And um, like I said, take just take out the Twin Peaks angle. Yeah, it'll be a confusing fucking. Thing, but I'm, I'm just trying to say, um, I'm not no expert in things, but I do enjoy the way films are made. I maybe fancy myself a writer in some sense with my book, and like I said, the things I do on the side. And I want to get, I would love for people to watch this and give it a shot. Just Queen of Hearts, a Twin Peaks fan film. I mean, just put this saying it like that seems weird, right? But it's it's something that's gonna be I'm watching a lot and fitting into the theme of everything. I don't know what David Lynch will do with the fucking uh franchise. I call it a franchise. Whatever it is, whatever you call that stuff, what is its current state? Is Showtime the owner of the show now and the property? Property. Maybe that's the right word, right? I don't know. So I don't know if David Lynch has any... Um, I don't know if David Lynch has any aspirations to do it. I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't love his stuff and I don't know, you know, what's going on in that sense. But he was getting old. He's getting old, right? I mean, I don't know what he wants to do. Is it time to hand it over? Like, has he? Does Showtime own everything right now? Like, I'm not even sure. So, you know, 
some of it, I used to go to fan fiction boards. I was um on a site called uh, KMC Killer Movie. I don't know what the fuck is the community. And I was making signatures for people at the time. Uh, I was going by Starlock at the time. And anyway, I would go in and it would be debates and talk. It was a big movie for him, big thing. And there's always um, that weight that Twin Peaks gets. And, you know, even from back then, I could see... You know, all the fan fiction that's written about stuff, and if it's not superheroes or comic books, maybe it's the big thing now, right? Um, imagine, you know, you go and you write a story about a superhero that they mention, but you don't get to see, and like, they're not going to use, but Mar- no. I, it, this is like David Lynch, these are great characters who I feel were misused. Don't get me into fucking Ray Weiss and season three, okay? They fucking pissed me off. And in, in in this thing, he's not, it's not even part of it, but you can tell when he chose to do this. I don't know, you know, I don't, it sounds fucking weird. Like, I'd rather him, run, I'd rather him, like, the like, guiding fucking David Lynch for that fucking 18 hour, what I call, beautiful disaster. Watch Queen of Hearts, a Twin Peaks. Fan film. If you're just somebody in the, you know, uh, just wondering about how to make movies and stuff, this is not a how to, but it could show you, you know, $25,000, maybe, you know, probably way more than that in a sense, what he puts in and, you know, what he's got to do and travel. He's taking shots. The, he's got everything the flavor, the, the, you know, locations. And he's got these actors that are wonderful. You know, I don't know if they're going to be fucking Brad Pitts or not. But you can tell they were fucking good Major Briggs. These, you know, Wyndham Earl. I was to- totally captivated, totally in it. Um, you know, and you hear about and we know about all the people who passed away on the show. And, you know, we'll never get to see them. Well, who knows what this day and age will be 3D fucking people everywhere. Uh, but uh, Paul Griffith Springer, Major Briggs. Uh, just awesome uh seeing norma you know paying attention to what people were wearing in their dresses and hairstyle music all right i'm gonna end this soon because i've been babbling about a fan film but i'm watching this movie maybe once i said i would have done that music cue differently or i would have used i'm not talking about sound effects or ambient stuff i'm talking about choosing to use a song you know, to maybe go over like a montage you're doing or something like that. When the credits roll, I'm fucking mesmerized by the Red Riding Hood song. And as I'm like, it's put me in the perfect fucking mood as the credits end. You know what? Um, I don't know why I'm going to say this, but Mermaids. Uh, the share movie. End credits roll and they play um, It's In His Kiss. I fucking love that song. I love the video. Uh, Winona Ryder. Well, who's the other chick? Young girl, little girl, cute girl dancing. Christina Ricci, maybe. And that song is forever. And that video and the fun they look like they're having. I don't even like my race. I don't watch the fucking movie. I never watched it more than once, but I don't even know what the fuck I'm getting to, but when the credits are rolling and I'm listening to this really deep song that just perfect ending to the movie type thing, and then I, I, don't, I remember turning my head around immediately and I hear Olivia Newton John's magic. Holy fucking shit, can you pick a better fucking song? I, talk, I think I talk about it numerous times. All right, so. One of my favorite Marvel movies is Thor Ragnarok. And it has one of the only moments, uh, there are not a lot of them, but I'm not trying to say one's a movie's better, that I forget to breathe. And it's a music cue, and it's Led Zeppelin, and it's used twice in the movie. And, and that, it's very, 
very rare that I almost forget to breathe and I'm so wrapped into it. This fucking psycho, uh, whatever the powers he has, he puts in magic and it couldn't have been a better song for me at that second. I'm born in 1971. I'm just about 18, let's say, I don't know, 18 to 20. Twin Peaks comes out, the uh, uh, Fire Walk With Me, that whole thing, the tapes and the d diary. I'm not the biggest fan, like, but just, you know, wow. All right, I've been babbling long enough. This is, um, watch this. I mean, I, I can't, I might have listened to the fucking end credits of Magic nine to ten times and then search videos of the song it's so fitting i so want to give away the ending of the movie because it's fucking amazing if you're fans of the show it was all right i'm gonna i'm gonna say this no maybe you don't believe me but like i said talking about how i was gonna tie it into my superhero role playing it happened the way i wanted it to happen because I'm thinking in my mind, you know what, you know what should happen? <laughs> and because I, uh, I don't want to give them those rights because that's where I go. That's my, that's what you have to do as a game master. You know, you set up the adventure, the story, and, you know, you're narrating and you're talking to the players and they're deciding their things. And at the time I was like, you know what should I want to fucking see? Because I'm getting fucking nuts because you really start seeing the strength of this uh, actress, uh, Madison Bates, or the strength of the character, Annie Blackburn, and where she's going, you know, from being in trauma from an event that happened on the fucking TV show, technically, and, uh, well, you know, Fire Walk With Me, she's got the uh, bed scene, right? Not much, and then he ignores her in the fucking... Show and then it's uh, not the secret history. What is it? Um, the final dossier just starts, you know, ah, da, 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 da. fuck. I thought it was such an important part of the show. So, this is it. This is your what was it? Hashtag Annie Blackburn lives or whatever the fuck it is. Or I don't know, bring it back to life. I don't know. The fucking return. Brought Laura back and then fucking locked them in a fucking dimension and 80% of the people pulled their fucking hair out of their head because David Lynch did a fucking David Lynch thing. This is satisfying. I'm fucking super happy with it. That thing is like I'm going over time limit. My producers and my all my staff here are, are waving to me. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> Queen of Hearts. A Twin Peaks fan film. Written and directed by Cameron Cloutier. Produced by Madison Bates. Photographed and edited by Cameron Cloutier. Visual effects by Benjamin Oliver. And I don't think I've ever done this. And I really fucking ignore everybody. And even in blockbuster movies. For the most part. But it's starring Madison Bates as Annie Blackburn. Nico Abera as Dale Cooper. Charlotte Roy as Caroline Earl. Paul Griffiths Springer as Wyndham Earl. Sarah Andrews as Norma Jennings. Larry Oblander II as Major Briggs. He was fucking spot on. I mean, so much so good. Scott Johnson as Dean. Mindy Whitfield as Diane. Give it a shot. Leave a comment. Hope everybody's doing good. Later.